Negotiation. It's not just reserved for starting a new job. It's something that we can do each and every day, according to negotiation expert Dr. Joshua Weiss. As the program director for Baypath College's negotiation program and a senior fellow at the Harvard Negotiation Project, Weiss has plenty of tips and pointers, which he shared with me recently. Generally speaking, most people view negotiation in a very narrow kind of way. They typically just think about it um, when it comes to salary negotiations or what they do with jobs or going to negotiate for a car. And yet, um, first of all, they take a very narrow approach to negotiation, a sort of win-lose um, way of seeing and doing. So black or white, done. Correct. And they don't realize that there are actually so many other places where you negotiate and that how you approach negotiation matters dramatically. And actually, the goal is, in the end, to meet your short-term interests, but also um, to try to preserve the relationship, because most of our negotiations are actually with people we have to work with over and over again. Right, because, well, let's take job, for instance. Yes, you're negotiating to start a job, hopefully successfully, and then land that job, but then you're going to work with these folks for a That's good right. amount of time. That's right. And you absolutely want to, you know, in that scenario, you want to enter the the job in a good way and you want to feel good about what you're doing there so that as negotiations come up as you're negotiating with your boss to do certain things or others um, that you're essentially you know really working with them um, and that's where negotiation comes in. So what's some of the gray? What are some of those areas in between that we can help people understand that would make them better negotiators? The biggest thing that people can do to really help themselves is to understand the difference between what we call positions and interests. So positions are what people say they want. Interests are why they want them. Hmm. And people are motivated by so many different things. There can be tangible things like budgets and money that can be part of the motivation. But they're also motivated by intangible things like their identity and making sure that they save face in a given situation. And so. Many negotiations um, encompass all of those pieces, and if you're not paying attention to that, you miss a lot of opportunities to actually create better deals. So when you're looking at these positions and interests, mm -hmm. you also have to keep in mind, I would imagine, not just what my, my positions and interests right. are, but what the other person is thinking. So how do you find that information out and then work together, it sounds like? Yeah, and that's one of the common mistakes in negotiation is people actually don't see the interdependent nature of it. And people will say to me, for example, well, that's your problem. When you figure it out, let me know. And I'll <laughs> say, you know what? The reality is if I don't get what I need, then I'm not going to say yes. And your goal here is to get me to say yes. Mm -hmm. So that's a very big part of the challenge for most people in negotiation is they think they have to hold their cards close to the vest. And in certain kinds of negotiations, that's true. So in one-off negotiations, if you're buying a car or a house or something like that, you may want to do that, play the sort of high-low game. But in most of our negotiations, I would say 95% of our negotiations, um, what we find is actually that if we don't share information, um, people don't really know what matters to us. So information becomes the currency of negotiation. And the more that I know about you and what matters to you, um, the better off I am. For example, when you are going to negotiate a, a, a job, um, a lot of times people will just focus on the money. And yet, they may very well value flex time because they have kids that they need to pick up. They might like to telecommute. They might need benefits. Um, they might need, you know, longer vacation. All kinds of things that you can ask so for. So make a little list for yourself of the things that are important to you and then consider ways to negotiate on each of those things, not just the money. Exactly. And the interesting part of that is that often those things are things that people can do, like a prospective employer could do for you without a whole lot of cost to them. And that's one of the tricks to negotiation is finding those realms where people can actually give you things that don't cost them a whole lot. And that's why sometimes compromise is sort of a bad approach to negotiation, because we rush to that. A lot of people feel anxious in negotiation, mm -hmm. and so they just want to split the difference and move on. And what they ought to be doing is getting creative and asking, well, let me make sure I understand everything that matters to you here. And then sort of being able to expl expand the pie before you actually divide it. But it seems to me in negotiation, oftentimes it's someone you're meeting for the first time when you're sitting right. down to have this discussion. And what you just kind of outlined, yeah. to me, takes a little bit of uh, relationship building. How would you advise people to kind of work quickly <laughs> mm -hmm. to understand these things that are then going to help them? So one thing that I, I try to actually say to people is slow the negotiation process down. Most of the time, there's not a hurry, and yet people want to just wrap things up quickly. Sure. 
And so the reality is if you don't know somebody, you know, you have to protect yourself along the way. Um, but what I advise is to sort of say to them, look, there's a way that we can approach this process where I can tell you what's important to me and you can do the same and we can actually create a better deal. And so what you do is not lay all your cards on the table, but offer one thing up with the sort of caveat that you're, you know, you're going to share something that's important to you and you kind of expect them to do the same so that you Reciprocity. begin down, right, yeah. you begin, de begin down that road. And if they don't reciprocate, then, you know, you have to think about where you want to go from there and whether you want to continue. For a lot of people, they don't know that there's another way to negotiate. And I think that's part of the problem mm -hmm. um, is the world around us is often telling us, you know, this is a win-lose game. And it's actually not. I do a lot of work with companies and organizations and more and more companies are realizing that they've got to work effectively. Like I said, you know, meet their short-term interests, but not at the expense of the long-term relationship. And so how do you then weigh that? If, if I'm going in mm -hmm. for whatever, whether I'm negotiating with my kid to get them on the bus in the right. morning right. <laughs> or, you know, something more serious, uh, a new job, mm -hmm. how do you make that list and decide for yourself, okay, these are the things that I should be, that I want to walk away with, these are the things that I can be a little flexible on, right. you know, how do you all fit that all together? Right. So one of the keys to negotiation is preparation. So President Eisenhower once said, plans are useless, but planning is everything. <laughs> and I think that really applies to negotiation. Negotiation is sort of like chess. What you do is you come up with contingency plans and theories and thinking how you go from A to B. But absolutely, the key is before you get in the room, thinking about what is it that's most important to me here and what are those things that perhaps I could let go if I need to. Um, if you don't do that, then you end up um, running the risk that you're going to just agree to anything and then realize when you leave the room that, wait, I just gave up what it was that I really wanted. Mm. So it requires some thought. And we use a lot of checklists with the students I teach and the people I work with to sort of say, you know, let's use this list to help you to order and prioritize what's most important to you. Something else I've heard you talk about is the importance of avoiding making assumptions. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Because I think so often you think like, oh, I'm preparing. I'm thinking about how to counter what they might say, but then that comes with some assumptions. One of the things I do when I sit down for the first time with somebody is say, can you just help me understand from your perspective what we're negotiating about? They kind of look at me funny initially, yeah. but what I'm really trying to do is get at what's, you know, what's your perspective on what we're doing here? Because I've been in negotiations where I was talking about monetary issues and somebody else was talking about our ability to work together. So if somebody says something, you say, well, can you help me understand how you arrived at that conclusion, which is going to reveal um, their perception or assumptions.